So what I want to look at today is how much better is my new professional camera compared to the camera I shot my first ever worldwide ad campaign on. So these are two very different bits of kit from two very different eras of photography. This is a DSLR full frame. This is a mirrorless medium format. This is a technical camera. This is your, your generic DSLR. But the interesting thing is, what I'm shooting hasn't changed and where it's appearing, if anything, has become less of an issue. So have I got a better camera here or can I still do the same job with this? Now there's several things we're going to look at within this. One is the pixel peeping over here because I've got both images, image A and image B, which are the wrong way around for some bizarre reason. But we'll also look at the functionality of it. Now, first of all, let's just get this up on the screen. Let me show you the two different images we took. This was part of a test shoot we were doing. We've done a whole series on them. I shot one frame on the Fuji, which is the GFX100S with a Cambo MV and a 90 millimeter Mamiya Secor RZ67 lens. And the other one was shot on a Canon 5D Mark II with the 100 millimeter 2.8 gold ring lens, both at their base ISOs of 100, both at the same aperture, very similar angles, but we'll get to that later. They're not identical and there's a good reason for that and maybe you can spot why. And both images, I think, look okay. We've color corrected them, contrast, and, and that's pretty much it. A little bit of a tidy up here and there. There's a lot of sensor just on one of the cameras. Can you guess which one? Um, but first of all, from A to B, let me know in the comments below which one you think is the new camera. Is it camera A or is it camera B? and we'll reveal all further into the video. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this camera, let me just first of all explain the differences here. This one, we look through here, there's a mirror, it goes through the lens, this focuses forwards and backwards, everything else you have to do with positioning of the camera. This, you can tether it, it's got live view. I've shot years on these cameras. I've, owned, I've probably owned five or six of these over my career. The 5D Mark II is, the perfect budget camera. You can get this now for 200 pounds and the same for the lens. So this is a 400 pound setup. On the flip side over here, we've got medium format, 100 megapixels. This is probably a 3000 pound camera, nearly a grand's worth of lens and lens hood. And then this is about three, 4,000 pounds here. So we're nearer the 7,000 pound mark for this system. This one focuses forwards and backwards, as does that, but via manual focus, not auto. But it also has technical movement, swing, tilt, rise, fall, shift, all of that sort of thing. Do a lot of perspective work with this, and a lot of depth of field work. All very interesting, but does it matter? Now I had a stopgap between these two cameras, which was the 5DSR with the Zeiss Milvus which is also a very great camera. And to be honest, I couldn't tell the difference really apart from in post-production between this setup and that. I do like this setup at the moment. This is very much a bit of me, but what about image quality? Let's dive into this machine and let's have a quick look. So the first thing I've done is I've made them the same resolution. So we've got image B on the left and image A on the right. They're the same resolution. We use the same bronze color lighting and let's just zoom on in. This is 100% at 3000 pixels, at 300 DPI TIFF files. You can see a difference in color. Now there's only one giveaway for me, which is as to which camera's which, um, but these are just, you know, TIFFs. There's no, no color grading here, apart from correction. They've both got good amounts of detail. They both seem to have nice colors. One's very colorful. One's a little bit more yellowy, perhaps. We've got similar clipping here to here. You know, it could be slight difference in many things causing that. You know, the drips are slightly different. They were taken pretty much one after another. There's a bit of time between them. Obviously I didn't get the exact angle the same. We'll talk about that in a minute because that's a very important factor. But here's the images. Let's have a look at the plinth. I use autofocus on the Canon. And I use obviously manual focus on the uh, Fuji because that's all we've got and from a distance. There we go, so can you tell the difference there? And now, if you've guessed that image A was shot with the Canon and not the Fuji, you were wrong. Image A was shot with this, and here's why you can tell, and this is where it's not necessarily image quality, and maybe it doesn't even matter, but if you look at image A, we're looking up at the burger, but we can see the top of the plinth. Now that's a creative decision. You can only do that with this sort of camera. You can't do that with a Canon. 
Now, does it matter? You might go, yeah, but I prefer image B where you can't see the top of the plinth. We wanted to see the top of the plinth, but we also wanted the hero angle. So if you look at both of these, you can see under this pickle at the same sort of angle that we've used some movements on this camera to see on top of the plinth at the same time. You know, a little bit of jiggery pokery in there for that. That's what I wanted, but does it matter? Not really, if you didn't want that, does anyone care? It's just that I see a lot of images where it's looking up as a hero angle like this. I just thought, you know, I wanted it a bit more standard looking in terms of the plinth perspective, but still the burger looking hero, because that's what it was all about. The colors on the Fuji are richer. They're more vibrant. They almost look a bit toxic compared to the Canon. And on the Canon, they're thinner. And I think that's the best way to describe it. They're slightly thinner. They're not quite as deep. The detail is much higher, especially on these seeds at the top, on the Fuji. It's night and day. The meat is not such a big difference. Maybe that's just a depth of field thing, but it's a, you know, I think it's a big difference. Now, the biggest difference I've seen is here, this front plinth. Look at the exposure difference. The shadows are kind of similar, but we've completely losing highlight detail on the Canon image. Now, if we go to the develop module, is it still there? Let's just pull it down. Yes, it is. So it's still in there. It's not like it's gone forever, but we've definitely lost something. Now, both of these images are completely acceptable to go into post-production to be used for ad campaigns of any level. I could shoot this, say it was for, let's say Burger King, because it's a burger. I could have shot this in either camera and they'd be happy. Which begs the question, why spend seven grand on one of these when you can spend 400 pounds on a 5D Mark II? Well, there are a few reasons, and I always like to preface this with, you really don't need to, and if you can't afford to, definitely don't. It will not change your career. The reason I can afford this is because I shot a lot of big campaigns on something cheap first. I could continue, but I made my life easier and I made my retouchers life easier. Retouching a 16-bit 100 megapixel file is a lot easier. It just is. You've got more room in post, you've got more room when the client goes, oh, can we just change this? You're like, yes, we can. Masking's easier. That's a better way to be. Cropping's better, especially today when you have to crop for 50 different outputs. This makes it easier. But you can still do it with the 5D Mark II. It's not an impossible task. The next thing which makes this camera better for me is the technical abilities. Seeing on top of it whilst looking up. That, that's something you can't do with my Canon. You get a tilt shift lens, but it's not really as good as what we use for years. But at the same time, this is not career make or break things. It's not like if you didn't have this, you couldn't get the job. If you didn't have this, you couldn't get a good shot. I've just proved that you absolutely can. And I don't think that anyone client side would know the difference. There's a bit more of a yellow tint, the left one, but we could fix that. And the right one's got slightly toxic colors, but we could fix that. You know, it's not, it's not night or day. I don't think you'd know, you know the different cameras that have shot them, but do you know which one's better? You might have a personal preference, but you can always change it in post. So there's a lot to think about here. And I think the important thing, just diving down to grab this, to remember is that for 400 pounds, you can get into a camera system that allows you to shoot worldwide ad campaigns. If you have spent more than that, that's fine if you can afford it. But if you're thinking I've only got four or 500 pounds, then this is what I used. I shot for very big brands doing this, worldwide brands, worldwide campaigns. I made the same money using this as I do today using this. Billboard resolution hasn't changed. Web resolution hasn't changed. Nothing has changed in terms of the output. This lets me do some cool fancy stuff that probably only photographers care about. This gets the job done. And I think that's an important thing because it's so easy to become fixated on making sure you've got the right kit, good enough kit. This is good enough. This still tethers, it fires flash, it sinks at 200th of a second. What more do you need in a camera? It's got 20 megapixels, which is enough for anything. If a really big job comes in, rent one of these. They're like 100 pounds a day. Don't spend seven grand if you don't have seven grand kicking around. And it's not like, oh, I've got seven grand in my account. That's not the time to spend it. It's when you've got seven grand over the amount of your account, which is your safety net. And a lot of new photographers, beginners, make this mistake when starting a business. They go, oh, I've got 15 grand in my bank. I'm going to go and buy 15 grand of kit. If you need a 25,000 pound buffer for salary and stuff, then you need 15 grand on top of that before you even consider buying new kit. And this is why I like to make these videos, just to show you how much a camera can cost 
that can get the job done. Let me know your opinions in the comments below as well. And if you'd like any other videos on this sort of thing, happy to make them. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.